These are only a few of the more than 800 million Chinese who live in an area almost as big as Europe. So many people, nearly a quarter of the human race, spread over so large a territory, might have been divided into a host of countries with different languages and cultures. What distinguishes China as a national unity and a living expression of one of the great civilizations on Earth is her history, the only one boasting a continuous record of nearly 4,000 years. For historical factors are inherent in the makeup of a nation, as biological genes are inherent in the makeup of a person. To know China, one must have an overall perspective of her history. Geography is as much a factor in historical development as time and man. Physically, China is a distinct area defined by deserts, mountains, rivers, and the ocean. The longest waterway in East Asia dominates her... The Yellow River dominates the north, which is endowed with a fertile yellow earth called Lewis, fine particles deposited by the wind. Over this landscape, early men roamed. Their Stone Age culture and fossil remains have been unearthed in widespread localities. Among the earliest was the Lantian Man of 600,000 years ago, discovered in 1963 and 1964 in modern Shenxi province. In limestone caves not far from Peking, Complete skulls and long bones of the so-called Peking man were first found in 1929. He existed in this locality about a half a million years ago and had a brain capacity about two-thirds that of modern man. Living among deer, hyenas, saber-toothed tigers, and many other wild animals, Peking man hunted with throwing spears, traps, and snares. He fashioned stone tools to cut trees and meat, to skin animals and trim sticks. Most amazing of all, burnt bones and ashes left in caves mark Peking Man as the first known creature on Earth to use fire for cooking. A direct ancestor of the present-day Chinese was found in the upper cave at the same spot, dating to some 20,000 years ago. Called the upper caveman, he sewed skins for clothing, strung animal teeth, shells, and fish bones for ornaments, used pigments, and buried the dead. The upper caveman belonged to the Mongoloid race, which came to dominate East Asia, then spread to Siberia, northeastern Russia proper, Central Asia, Southeast Asia, and Indonesia, and across the Bering Strait to the American continent. The first major civilization of the Mongoloid race originated in an area around the meeting point of two tributaries and the Yellow River proper. Here, in what is modern Shanxi province, about 10,000 years ago, food gathering people gradually learned food producing by planting crops and domesticating animals. The art of the early Chinese potter included wares decorated with impressions from cord, fingernails, matting, and carved stamping, as well as with prickings. Around 6,000 years ago, a Neolithic culture characterized by painted pottery emerged. Known as Yangshao, it is named after the site in central China. Yangshao farmers lived in villages that separated kiln centers from dwelling areas and built houses partly above 
and partly below the ground level. The village cemeteries were also separate. Buried with the dead were utensils and stored food, an indication of their belief in the afterlife. Yangshao culture extended as far west as modern Gansu province, which became China's land link with Central Asia some 2,500 years after this burial. With primitive but well-fashioned tools, Yangshao people planted millet, fed pigs and dogs. They also hunted with bow, arrow and spear and fished with harpoon, fish hook and net. Their religious activities probably included ancestral worship and shamanistic magic. Very likely, Chinese writing began with symbols and signs carved and painted on Yangshao pottery. A soft and flexible brush must have been used by the potter, together with mineral pigments containing iron for red and manganese for black. In the eastern coastal area, another Neolithic culture known as Qinlian Gang flourished about 5,000 years ago. Its pottery was decorated with unique painted designs. Engaging in well-developed stone, bone, and jade industries, its people's livelihood depended mainly on cultivating paddy rice and raising domestic animals. As farming spread to areas favorable for such human endeavor, a late Neolithic culture called Lungshan grew along the middle and lower reaches of the Yellow River. It added the horse to domesticated animals and included wheat and rice among staple crops. Lungshan culture is distinguished by a wheel-made black pottery of burnished fine gray clay, sometimes paper thin in almost mechanical perfection. Partially from this culture, the first Chinese historical dynasty, Shang, evolved. Now China entered the Bronze Age. Craftsmen mastered the technique of achieving high temperatures in kilns through pottery making and they devised clay molds and cores to receive the molten alloy of copper, lead, and tin. Bronze vessels were made for ancestral sacrifices. Of many Shang types discovered up to this date, they can be classified broadly as food cookers and containers, wine holders, goblets, and servers. Animal motifs decorating the surfaces, as well as shaping the forms of these vessels, all had symbolic meanings. But modern scholarship has yet to unlock all the secrets of ancient designers. Some natural, some fanciful, some simple, some complicated. These zoomorphic figures conform to a unifying style which expresses a deeply religious feeling. Other arts also prospered. Ceramics featuring white, hard, and glazed pieces. Jade carving done with consummate skill. And sculpture in the round. This tiger-headed kneeling figure of marble is closely related in style to bronze ritual vessels and in technique to jade carvings. Its surface decorations are linear designs resembling tattoo over the human-like body. Shang builders use stamped earth layer upon layer to shape foundations and walls. Architecture took on characteristic Chinese configurations of squares and rectangles based upon the rule of symmetry and four cardinal directions. Shang sericulture and weaving reached a high stage of development. Real silk threads and a sort of draw loom produced fine silk textiles, as seen in traces of fragments adhering to late Shang jades and bronzes. Behind the drive for artistic excellence was a religious fervor and a belief in the God on high. 
considered the ancestor of the Shang people. Kings and noblemen were thought to join him after death. They were buried in their huge tombs, not only with precious objects, birds and animals, but also with servants and slaves, sometimes numbering several hundred. It was a society of power and beauty, but also of extreme cruelty. The same belief in supernatural power spurred the development of the written language. The earliest known Chinese writing system appeared on oracle bones and shells. Priests prepared animal bones and turtle shells by drilling oval recesses on them. Then they interpreted the cracks caused by heating these recesses as revelations from the God on high. Matters of sacrifice, war, building, hunting, planting, weather, health, travel, and many other states of personal affairs depended on such revelations, which were written down by priests on the same bones and shells. For example, on the bone fragment at right, will God order rain to make this a good year? Another momentous question was answered. Do not war against that country. God would not protect us. On the more than 100,000 pieces of oracle bones and shells unearthed so far, some four to 5,000 different characters were used. Shang oracle bone and shell writing already displayed basic construction methods of the fully developed Chinese writing system. In addition to markings indicating numbers shown here from 1 to 10, one group of pictographs represented natural objects such as horse, deer, ox, fish, tree, and crop. Sun, moon, water, and fire. Man-made objects such as bow, tripod, and boat as well as woman and man. A second group consisted of ideographs that combined images to express ideas. One person followed by another meant to follow. Three persons meant crowd. Two abreast meant together. A man facing away from a food vessel meant already eaten or already. A bow and arrow meant to shoot. Besides pictographs and ideographs, a third type combined two elements, sound and meaning. For example, the word my for dust storm combined the word wildcat to borrow its pronunciation my and the word rain to use its meaning related to storm. The monolithic power of the king over his highly organized society tolerated no opposition from priests, noblemen, craftsmen, farmers, laborers, and soldiers. Trading activities within his domain were probably helped by the use of cowrie shells as currency. The care lavished on ritual bronzes reflect Shang people's deep superstition. The abundance of drinking vessels verify records of their indulgence in wine, which was fermented from grain. Protected by helmet, the warrior fought with bow and arrow, spear, axe, and knife and a unique. His war chariot, represented graphically by this character in the Shang language, had two huge wheels and was pulled by two or more horses. Agriculture depended on the accuracy of seasonal timing and kingly power relied on readings of the signs of heaven. For these purposes, Shang priests used a calendar they inherited from even more ancient times. Using 10 heavenly trunk characters and 12 earthly branch characters, they made pairs by taking one from each group to identify a single day. The combinations resulted in a cycle of 60. To Shang priests, the moon's changing faces were the most regular celestial happenings besides the travel of the sun.
They used the cycle of the moon's wax and wane to make a month, and the cycle of the sun's four seasons to make a year. The difference between the solar year and the 12 lunar months was made into an extra month for each of seven years out of every 19 years. Eclipses and other celestial phenomena were closely observed by men in charge of the calendar. For instance, on this bone was recorded the sighting of Nova around 1300 BC as a new great star. This bronze ceremonial weapon inlaid with turquoise still reflects the splendor of Shang, which was partly supported by raiding less advanced neighbors for treasures and slaves. After conquering the southeastern barbarians, Shang opened up an area increasingly important to the growth of China. Around 1100 BC, a culturally backward tribe called the Zhou was rising in power and invading Shang in the central plain. As the Shang army was composed largely of slaves of uncertain loyalty, many defected in the final battle and the Shang dynasty came to an end. The conquerors established their capital in the West and became known historically as the Western Zhou Dynasty. But the new ruling house adopted the old culture as evidenced by this Zhou bronze vessel of the transition period. Chinese civilization from the beginning was characterized by originality and vigor. This is not to exclude the possibility that the Yellow River Valley had substantial contact with the outside world. Nephrite rings, war chariots, and bronze spearheads of the Shang dynasty showed similarities with those developed in the same period or earlier in Central Asia and the Near East. But distinct Chinese innovations point to an essentially indigenous culture. While retaining many primitive features in language, art, and religion, it was to advance and evolve into a major civilization with an unmatched continuity.